Hi, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing. I was just waiting for a break in the sound out there. It was super loud in the garage today. Anyways, um, let's talk about aftercare a little bit more. All right. Okay, now that's over with. Aftercare. Um, I think we have a, a couple videos out already about aftercare and how to approach it, but I get asked a lot and I don't know if it, like aftercare is such a complex thing. Like a lot of people, I think really want to cut and dry. Like this is the only thing you have to do to take care of a tattoo and that's it. And it doesn't really work like that. Right. Um, aftercare is what said this before in a video, right? It is just the care that you give after getting a tattoo, right? That's it. It's not going to heal the tattoo, right? Aftercare does not heal a tattoo. Let's write this up here so it stays up the entire time we're talking, right? Aftercare doesn't heal your tattoo. Let's <laughs> do this really blocky. Yeah. Sorry, I, I had a 20 hour day yesterday, so I'm a little bit ugh, right now. Um, <coughs> so what do I mean aftercare doesn't heal your tattoo? <clears throat> your body heals your tattoo, right? It's a very specific biological process that'll go in towards remodeling the skin to repair a wound and also to accept and hold and make permanent the pigment that you put into the skin, right? Um, aftercare is only there to make sure that the body is in peak physical condition and that way it can heal the tattoo more effectively, right? If your skin is, and it's kind of like a sliding scale, right? The amount of interventions is gonna be required to heal a tattoo. Let's say on this, this will be minimal, right? And this is max. Um, if we do a single dot, right? We'll just do this right here. Boink. One dot. The amount of trauma that the skin is going to experience, right? Is not that much. If we just take out a needle, dip it in black, stretch no gloved, cleaned, all the other prep and everything. I don't have to probably explain that, but just in case I do. You do one dot and you stop. The amount of trauma that the body is going to experience is, is minimal, right? Therefore, we'll do this underneath it, right? It's, it's congruous. Like this is minimal. I can't multitask, especially when I'm tired. Interventions. So, the, the minimal interventions is going to be like, if you have a single dot on your back, would you be washing it three times a day with antibacterial soap and putting a product like Aquaphor on it five times a day? No, right? Like, it just seems silly. You just probably leave it alone and it would heal fine, right? Um, on the side for the max trauma, right? This is going to be like 13 hour session at three days, uh, no breaks large area um, with pain management, which I, I'm not going to get into that as well about using numbing creams. We made a video about it. If you want to go back and see it, that actually um, will make a lot of sense. But the amount of trauma that you're going to put on the body, let's say we do three day sessions back to back to back 13 hours each day. There's no breaks in between it and it's a large area. So we do like a full rendering on a thigh, leg, hip and foot, right? Like that's a ton of trauma. So it's going to be like area time spent in chair, you know, all those things are going to add into it. That's a lot of, that's a lot of trauma that's going to be imparted on the skin, right? So this one is going to be, you know, you, you need like maximum interventions, right? Um, now these are always going to be tailored to the individual, right? Because when we're thinking about the, the, the amount of interventions, it's not going to just be cut and dry because not everyone is the same, right? Everything that's going to happen on this, and we can just keep laying these out, you know, on top of each other. This will be the client line, right? Client. Let's do this. Client. Trauma. Boop -a -doop -a -doo. Intervention. So we have a client who is minimally physically active, right? This is a sentient life. They're just like sedentary, sentient. Yeah, they're alive. Fucking A, Ryan. <laughs> not active. Let's just do that. Oh my gosh. Uh, they're not active, right? Versus somebody who is very active, right? 
the amount of interventions that we're gonna have to use on them are gonna be different. If this person gets this 13 hour, three day setting back to back to back and gets their entire leg done and then they're gonna go run a marathon afterwards, we're gonna have to do a lot of stuff to make sure the tattoo heals out effectively, including telling them probably don't go run a fucking marathon, right? Um, so like all of these things are that sliding scale, but they're gonna be tailored to the client every time, right? If you have a client who works in construction and they get a sleeve done, you know, four hour settings, you know, X amount of time as it takes to get it finished. When they go to work, they're gonna experience different stresses than someone who sits behind like um, a computer, right? So those interventions are gonna be tailored a little bit differently. Maybe we need to worry about covering up the construction worker's tattoo, which we have a video about that as well, like how to take care, or a couple hacks for taking care of a tattoo if you work a labor job. Um, but you're gonna to wanna to think about that, right? Like tailor the aftercare to them. If they're not gonna be around potable water and soap, how are they gonna be able to wash their tattoo through the day? Okay, if they can't wash their tattoo, how should we take care of it, right? Well, if there's a lot of trauma, we're probably gonna to have to ask them to bring potable water, go pick up a bottle of like distilled water, take it with you to work, it only costs a buck, right? And a little bit of soap, give a rinse, let it rinse out, like get in a safe space where you can do that to make sure it stays clean. Meanwhile, like somebody who works in an office space, maybe they gets like a small, you know, sun and moon or something combo on the inside of their wrist. It's not a lot of trauma, they're not very active, we don't have to worry about environmental factors like heat, sun, sweat, dust, dirt, things like that, right? All we'll have to worry about is like it touching that dirty ass like wrist pad when they're typing on their computer. So we're trying to figure out ways to like make sure that we're always custom tailoring the aftercare to the client. Now, we get into this and this is probably where we're gonna spin off here just for a second is trans, um, transparent adhesive dressings. People say like, you know, Tegaderms. I shouldn't use the names. We'll bleep that out. Um, if you're using those type of products, right, and transparent adhesive dressings, know that they're not actually made for tattoos. Um, they could have the name tattoo on them or made by a company that sells tattoo products, but they're originally developed to serve a different purpose, right? So they weren't, like when they created them, they didn't create them and go, we're going to test the safety and efficacy of this product on tattoos and see what the results are. Um, if you look at products like Tegaderm, um, they were designed to hold catheters in place or IVs, right? Small window dressing so you could see the wound and make sure that it's gonna be you know, not occluded, blocked up, something like that. Or things are like, you know, if they need to be packed and cleaned, like a diabetic foot ulcer or something like that, that you can see what's going on without having to constantly open the wound, right? Um, those situations are much different than the tattoo. So it, it, when you're using things like this, like let's say that you have a minimally invasive uh, tattoo on somebody who's not very active, maybe works an office job, and it's in a spot that maybe they'll get a little bit aggravated due to their work. The tattoo is not productive, which means it's not weeping, right? It doesn't have any exudate, which is that weepiness that comes out of it, right? Kind of almost looks like plasma water. It's like yellowish tinge. Uh, if that stuff comes out, yeah, you might be all right using a product like Tegaderm. I mean, it's not recommended, of course, because it's not what it was designed for, but it may come in handy for somebody who's working in an office. Um, as somebody who's going to be out in the field doing stuff, it may give them a false sense of security, right? So I would never personally recommend anyone to use a product like that if they get a larger scale work uh, piece of work done ever. Uh, we'll make a video about actually the pros and cons of transparent dressings later, but think about it, right? Like I would rather have somebody go out with a tattoo that's able to breathe, you know, exude moisture when they're sweating, not get trapped behind the bandages and, you know, be able to be washed effectively, especially if it gets dirt or grime or oil or whatever on it, right? So it's, it's like the aftercare always has to be fit to the person. So Go check out our other videos on it, right? About like making rational decisions about how much aftercare product to use. But for the most part, like if you're doing tattoos, think about the individual. Now, if you are a tattoo client, <laughs> sometimes you're gonna get really bad advice from a tattoo shop. If they don't sit there and ask you questions about what you do, who you are, what your like average skincare routine is or anything else, they just hand you a card and say, this is how you take care of it. Be skeptical, right? Because it's not taking you into account when you're actually trying to like take care of this thing that you've spent a ton of money on that's gonna be on you forever, right? Because aftercare is half the battle. If you have a super competent artist who knows everything right to do and it's just a perfect tattoo when you leave the shop, if you don't take care of it well, it can decrease the quality of the tattoo. And inversely, like you could have a tattooer who knows absolutely nothing doing a tattoo and you take perfect care of it, you're gonna be still stuck with that piece of garbage for the rest of your life, right? Anyways, so this is just kind of a breakdown. This is like theory, people. Like think about what you're doing, 
critically analyze what's going on and try to like build that ontology, right? Like how would I approach each individual, right? If you have dark skin or if you have light skin, if you're old, if you're young, if you are busy or not busy, if you're like a person who climbs mountains or someone who like sits in a chair all day, like all of those body types are gonna be different and we should approach their aftercare individually. Does that make sense? All right. This is Ryan from Better Tattoo and signing off. Hey, hey, hey.